Hi cuties, welcome back to my channel. Please let me know right in the comments below. So this week I'm giving an update on my nail tech school experience and I must say I have learned so much how to do nail art, how to do nail enhancements, nail overlays and now we're moving toward the end of the curriculum where we are discussing different business styles and how to actually follow through with what you want your business to look be and feel like. The top five practical skills that nail techs should possess and this is solely my opinion as you know I have not been in the the field of nail um, technician as a nail technician at all so this is just like my my honest assessment my opinion of um, the skills I want to possess personally and skills that I think others might find useful so the first practical skill I think is important for being a nail tech is having product knowledge. I say product knowledge is important because you want to build a clientele, right? And when you have products and you want to sell it, you have to know the product's uses, its features, how it'll help that client enhance their own at-home services, and how it can support the client's nail health in the long run. And I also say this because there are products that are different. Some are super expensive, some are not expensive at all, and some are probably not even recommended for usage, right? So when you know what products you have, and first of all, the expense and how much it costs, you may not use that expensive product on everybody, right? So knowing that you have purchased expensive products, and the least expensive products. Depending on how you use those products, you can kind of like customize your clientele, which leads me to point two of why product knowledge is important. Depending on the product you use on a person can determine how much they pay for services, right? So if you have a client who prefers top of the line products, top of the line services, you know this client is gonna spend more money than the client who doesn't want to spend that much on top of the line products. So when you have two different groups of people, some who are willing to spend the money and some who don't, then you have those in-between people who only spend money on special events, you can kind of like customize your clientele. You can have your like high-end purchases and your low-end purchases. I'm sure this is like a business concept somewhere, but just further assessing for myself, Knowing that I'm just getting into this and I haven't spent any money nor done any service on anyone, I'm thinking of this as well because I'm thinking like if I spend a lot of money on a name brand product, I'm going to want people who prefer name brands on their nails to spend that money, right? So product knowledge is important because one, you can customize your clientele and two, this leads me to my next point you can increase your sales meaning you can make money way more money so point two second from product knowledge is that you can schedule your appointments accordingly right so scheduling appointments is important because this is what helps you monitor your transactions and monitor your earned income if you're scheduling your appointments with people who don't want to spend money and may take up a lot of your time, this is um, this can be an issue because it can reduce your ability to earn the amount of money or the goal you may have set for the day or the week. So scheduling is super important because it allows you to fit people in accordingly. If you have that customized group of clients who like to spend money every week or every two weeks, you'll know who to prioritize, right? And I say this is super important because aside from just scheduling, you want to make sure you're not always booked, but meet your individual goals you may have set for yourself. 
So your customized clientele can be fit into your free time according to the things they would like done on themselves. Whether it's a nail enhancement, whether it's a soak off, whatever nail technician service that they prefer, you may be the individual they request. Right? So if you have a high-end client who prefers you to do their nails, who are you going to schedule and who are you going to take first? Do you give priority to the high-end clients or would you give priority to your low-end spenders who come back faithfully? Right? So scheduling is important because it will help you determine how much money you will be able to earn. Write in the comments if you have a preference on how you schedule your free time for clients. Do you try and book 10 clients a day or try to set a goal of doing like 50 clients a week? Or is it not up to you? How is your client scheduled and book? So scheduling appointments is important also because it allows you to monitor your monetary transactions. So if you have your schedule set for the week, you can kind of estimate the amount of money you will spend and in line which products, whether high-end products or low-end products, that you are going to use. So it kind of all aligns together, in my opinion. This is my opinion because I haven't started yet, but I'm thinking about these things before I actually get in the field and know the demand for these services, right? So I, as a person who's going to become a nail tech, I'll think of the products that I want to use and make sure I'm knowledgeable about them. Two, I'll make sure I'm scheduling appointments accordingly by my customized clientele, knowing that you have the ability to make these decisions ahead of time can help you meet the demands of your specific clientele and two, it'll allow you to fully oversee your monetary transactions. So I think this is super important in a second to product knowledge because you are the person rendering these services to your loyal clientele, right? See, I got my hand in any notebook. I wrote some of this stuff down. Um, the next important skill I say is to have a repeat business. So knowing that you are the one booking your appointments, scheduling your clients according to your availability, whether it's your free time, whether it's your um, cancel time, because that all goes into appointments. You want repeat business. This means you want to be able to have clients come back to you. So you, you're the one, right? You're the one scheduling your appointments, right? You have clients who prefer you to do their nails. So say if you have a big business, you have clients who prefer you to do their nails. They want you, no one else. So knowing that part, your customer service and that individual who knowing that you can meet their demand, they'll come back, right? This is a repeat service. So the goal is to have this between all your clients, all your clients repeat services. And some ways you can do that is one, engaging with your client, right? Making sure that those clients who specifically request you are able to have you do their nails or whatever services they come to the salon for. Maybe they want a pedicure, maybe they want a, a, a foot massage, something that they prefer you to do for them. This can create repeat services, right? And also, knowing that much, you can create a loyalty program like a loyalty program where you have a point system or a two for one, you spend this amount of service, you get this free hand cream, you get these free press on nails, come back next week and you'll be able to get a free eyebrow with, with uh, a massage. Some type of loyalty program to show that client, customer client, that you appreciate them. You can give away free things. You can give them things that they may have seen or asked about, whether it's a specific polish or maybe some type of back rub. Who knows, right? So what have you done to show your customers who are loyal to you that you appreciate them? Write in the comments some ideas, some suggestions you could recommend. Because these are just flowing off the top of my head, and I did write some down. But, um, yeah, and you can make sure, like, your personalized services are customized to this client. 
so they feel special, you know, so they could feel like I go to this salon, and in turn, the more they brag about it, um, they can help increase your business by getting you more customers. They'll tell people how how well your services are, how great you do nails, and how pleasant you are to speak with, be around. Sometimes these small practical skills can definitely enhance your services and make people appreciate it. So for starters, we discussed product knowledge, right? Scheduling appointments, which is important. Repeat business. And lastly, and most importantly, customer service service your clientele to continuously have them come back and tell others about it so for me I was thinking about these things because I'm not yet there and I was thinking about the the experiences I had when trying to get my nails done or doing nails and I've seen experiences that nail techs have had even people who, who I tell oh I'm gonna do nails I'm gonna be a, a nail tech and one response I got was, you sure you want to do that? You want to deal with people's attitudes? And I looked like, is it only attitudes? Like, is it attitudes from the client or should the nail tech be prepared to respond to a, 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 a pending attitude from a client or a customer, right? So I think about these things often because I'm not yet in that field and um, I do plan on entering it. You know, it's not going to be like right away, but these thoughts do like cross my mind to make sure that I'm mentally preparing to enter a whole new field. You know, so going back to my first video about the career cutie. When you had to think of why you want to enter a field, enter a field and, and think about what skills that align. Right? So if you don't have the skills that align, you can see what skills are required before you get into the field. So you as the person, so me as an individual, I don't have all these skills. And I'm not even going to pretend like I do. However, my preparation is up to me. I have to prepare. No one's going to make me prepare. Yeah, I'm doing Zoom online for my schooling, but I'm still not that great at acrylic. I'm still not that great at shaping. So should I sit around and practice on my own? How many hours can I do it on myself? Not that many. So I'm going to go find more training. That's just my preference. It's nothing to take away from my experience or what I'm learning because I'm learning amazing stuff. I'm learning amazing information and I'm learning new skills. But to hone those skills in my off time, to practice it in my off time, Yes, I have the, the ability and, and the goal to be better. So I have to do better. And it costs to do better, right? Like, <laughs> these are the differences. It's like, oh, I'm not that great, so I'm going to give up. Uh, I'm over it. No, I can't. I know I'm not that great at it. So I have to practice and be patient. And these are the skills that I have to think of. My old way of getting things done don't work. So should I be mad at myself? Do you get mad at yourself? Like, when is your cutoff point to be like, this isn't for me, but you like it and enjoy it? Please write in the comments, how long does it take you to give up on something? Certain things you don't have to give up on. You can probably put a pause on them and revisit them later because sometimes the time isn't right. So for me, I know the time is good now, but it's not gonna happen overnight. And I have to be patient with myself. Every time I practice on my mannequin hand, every time the acrylic doesn't work out well, I have to think about ways to be patient and revisit it. So these are things I'm practicing and thinking of as practical skills before I enter this, um, this field. And I kind of feel like I'm in it a little bit, you know, because I do have a set schedule where I take my time to sit down and prep the mannequin hand, reach out to people to say, hey, can I try and do a nail set on you? So, like, my mind is already made up that I'm going to do this. And regardless of how long it takes, it'll get done. It may be a side hustle at first because I'm not jumping in full throttle. I have other skills I can utilize with other people. 
So this will be like my beginning side hustle before I'm able to fully be like, oh, I got this down pat, you know. But it'll take a couple of years, a few years to feel so confident in it. You know, I'm kind of confident now, but not exceptional. Like, no, I got, I got, I, I could be patient with where I'm at. <laughs> you know, how long did it take you to um, feel confident enough to continuously do nails full time? So for me, I know I want to do other stuff and then nails as like, not on the side, but like build up my skill set over time. Because I know sitting there all day, my back wouldn't deal with it. I got to think of things that I can do while doing nails, you know. Because I know, I know my level of patience at this point. Knowing yourself is important. Like at this point, I know my patience isn't there. So this is what I'm saying. So, so yes. Those were my few tips. Product knowledge, scheduling appointments. Uh, what was the third one was? I know the fourth one was repeat business, and the third one was. See, see, I forgot. I forgot. If I didn't write that joint down, I would never remember. That was only three. Hmm. <laughs> product knowledge repeat business and scheduling appointments that's how it goes in my opinion because you want to make sure you have the skills and stuff but you want to make sure people come back and that you are the person that they want to come back to so that's my update hey cutie I see you cutie you know you're cute right stay cute regardless Mwah. bye i'll be back career cutie coming up